Well, hello, farming friends. Welcome back to another edition of Farming Simulator 2015 with me, your old buddy, Mr. Moose. We are back on Manchester with the soul mod installed and ready to do some planting. Uh, well, at least get the fields ready. Everything's been taken care of around the farm and we are set to get things going. Uh, we're going to do things a little bit differently today or somewhat differently today. We're still going to do a little bit of plowing, but we're going to do a little bit of it a different way. So uh, we're going to jump in the store today and I'm going to pick up a plow. I got to look at something real quick here. Cultivators. That's a chisel plow. And look at this. This hirsch, horse, excuse me, it's two wheels on the front, bunch of chisels. All right. Anyways, uh, I found a mod, uh, as I was telling you guys, I've been on Reaper site looking at things and um, found these three different rippers that he's got and a plow. Um, so I've been looking at them and I think this one is nothing more than the plow we're using right now. Only it's been made into a John Deere green. Uh, but then he, I found these two rippers that he has and they're pretty cool, uh, especially this one. This is like a chisel plow. And I thought we would use it for something different today. So I'm going to grab it. And again, you just go to Re Reaper's Facebook page, which is uh, Reaper9111. And um, go to his Facebook page. And you can get all the information from there. Uh, there's a banner that says Reaper's Mods. And you can get his mods uh, off of there. But anyways, I thought we'd get that and use it to do a little bit of work around the farm. And um, so yeah. So this is a, just a chisel plow. It's got the little chisels on it. Therefore, it's called a chisel plow. And then on the end, it's got a sole finisher on the back of it. To, it just sort of breaks things up a little bit. But, you know, I talk a lot about manual cultivation or, you know, manual weed control. These are what, if you took a row of these straight across and had these on a, on a bar, pulled behind your tractor, evenly spaced out to hit the furrows, uh, go between the furrows in your field. That's what a cultivator really looks like. It's got these little spades on it that go through and, and basically you'd have a row of, you know, 10 of them on the back on a bar or 10 to 12 or whatever, however your spacing is of your cultivator that you had. Uh, and it would have these spaced out so that um, they would go either side of whatever you had planted in the row. And you drop them down and they basically, they just bust the soil up between the plants. And that's how you would do me, uh, me, you know, mechanical weed control uh, in the field. And that's the way my grandfather did it. That's the way my father did it. Uh, they didn't do a whole bunch of herbicide, pesticides, and, and spraying and stuff. So uh, they didn't do too much weed control. So, But I thought I would uh, tell you a little bit about that and then we'll also... Uh, jump in the tractor here and we're going to use that to do a little bit of the plowing for us uh, and we'll still use the other two plows as well but i thought we'd mix it up a little bit do something different so we got all the fields got to get prepped and ready to go uh, we don't have to do any lime because we did do lime last time um, so all the ph levels are decent so let's jump around in here real quick there we go. And we're going to head over here to uh, this field here. This field here. And I'm going to set this up for course play simply because I want course play to handle all the turns and everything on it. Um, because I, I want... If I do this just with the regular hired help, I will end up with all kinds of little areas missed because it doesn't do a good enough job turning. So hopefully course play will do a little bit job, better job of turning. So I am going to set that up. Uh, and it's easy. Just go into field work here. And we'll set this up for field number six. And the working width on this. Well, I don't know what the working width on this is. Let's put it down.
So I was looking at this earlier, and I and I really think if I look at the cultivator here again, just to look at the wheel placements. See, that's only got two. I think it really is basically this cultivator, um, and he's just changed the wheel specs a little bit and made it into a to a plow, chisel plow. But anyways. All right, so now that that's spread out, I can calculate the working width of it, which is 7.2 meters. Uh, we are going to start, uh, what corner is this? This is the southwest corner. So we're going to start southwest corner. We're going to be headed north. Now we're going to be headed east. There we go. Make sure we get all that right. And I don't need any headland on this. We're just going to go back and forth. So we should have a start point right here. I'll go ahead and pull up to the field here and get started. There we go. And go ahead and back out a little bit. Let's go ahead and drop that down. Get started here. And I will um, make sure that four wheel drive is activated. I don't need a lane offset. Ooh, get rid of that real quick. Get to zero. Come on. Why would I have had a lane offset on this particular tractor? That's interesting. Sometimes you gotta go back and check all that stuff. Alright, so. It is driving its course. And so you can tell this is, you know, like I say, you can tell this is doing plow work instead of cultivating work because of the ground texture it leaves behind it. If it were cultivating, it would be a nice smooth texture. Instead, it is, uh, it's going to look like furrows. Uh, but it's a little bit faster way for us. We don't need to really turn the soil. We're just ripping it up and, uh, you know, basically busting up all the old root structure that was in there, breaking the ground so that we can come through. Uh, we'll still run through it with a, with our cultivator or our disc and uh, disc it real good and then we'll do our planting so I'm not changing everything up now and I've told you guys this on my farm like we're getting ready to plant for the winter and I am planting nothing but greens and when I plant greens I pretty much I'm still gonna get those big huge areas up here I just I guess I just need to use that Fent tractor because it has that tighter turning radius on it that sucks oh well um you know we're getting ready to plant here and when I'm planting greens like I said I just will run through the fields now the cornfield is a different thing the cornfield I will run through and and turn it because it gets all those roots all over the place from the corn and um, and they they become a pain in the butt so what I will do is uh, I will go through it with a plow and plow that field uh, but for the rest of it I will um, the rest of the stuff that was just vegetables beans things like that I'll just run through that with a disc uh, really aggressive with the disc and um, put some cinder blocks on the back of it so it digs into the ground real good and deep down to the axle and um, or down to the hubs and uh, I'll set the the disc on a nice aggressive pattern and I'll run through the field once aggressive and then I'll you can adjust, I don't know if you guys know this on a disc you can actually adjust the toe end of the disc in to to cut harder and deeper so if you pitch it really in where it has a more of the face of the disc going into the ground that's really aggressive and it causes it to dig and turn more dirt so like i'll set it really aggressive for the first pass to really rip the dirt and, and flip it then i'll set the second pass i'll i'll make it less aggressive i'll open up the face of it to where just more the edge of the disc where it's barely even going through the disc I'll set it up there and that way it goes through breaks up the clods and um, and just slices everything up and, and 
and uh, gets everything a little bit finer and ready to go for planting. So that's how I prep the fields this go round. Now, uh, when I plow, I pretty much plow once, and then I come back through the field with the with the disc on uh, you know not really much of a profile at all, uh, much like I do with my second disc. Uh, this didn't go around. It'll be a very uh, light profile on it, not very aggressive, and just run through it. And I use the disc to break up the clods that are formed when you go through it with the plow, and that's it. That's uh, that's how I, you know the difference in the two plantings are. Uh, when I go for my my spring planting, it's it's much more. It's a different process. The spring planting is really. I break up the soil. I've, I've said this before. I break up the soil um, early to let it do moisture banking, uh, where I flip the soil. It makes all the little ditches, furrows in there, and when we get in there and get ready to plant, um, you've had all that moisture hang out in there for a while, and it gets all the soil nice and nice and moist. And then we go in there, and I uh, um, I call a disc it right before I get ready to plant. So there's usually a 30, 40 day window there where I've gone in and done the plowing and um, come back and, and disc it afterwards, you know, about 30 days later. Whereas now when I do, um, when I do my, uh, my fall planting for my greens, all I'm doing is uh, I'm doing all the work in one or two days and getting it done and being ready to uh, go ahead and get everything uh, sewn in and and ready for the uh, for the growth spurts so yeah it only takes me about four days to get all the planting done uh, this time of year so whereas when I do my spring stuff it takes me several weeks uh, of work all right, so think about what I'm doing here. Need to roll this number down to 9.4 meters because we're going to be combining two of these guys together. We are in field number four. We are starting in the north east corner, headed south, and I do want to have one headland on here. So that part is right and then I need to come over here and adjust this down this is gonna be my second tractor so that should be 4.8 meters but it should be on the left side not the right there we go all right so this will be my outside tractor activate four-wheel drive everything is ready to go on that one Find this one. There we go. Oh, that is not the button to start it there, buddy. Alright. So anyways. Jumped in. Had track IR going. Didn't even look where in the right place. Alright. So... So we'll get this guy over here, get everything set up, and we will get going with these guys plowing uh, this field. So what else is happening? I, You know, after messing around with that irrigation system on uh, whatever that map was, that French map, uh, I'm thinking about giving it a try on this map. Now that I know what the problem was uh, with it bouncing around so much. And I think this field would be one of those that I could actually do it on. Because this is a square field for the most part. Uh, and I could walk it pretty much. If not, I'd have to use the, the ones that walk straight down the field and come to a stop at the end. 
uh, which those are not nearly as cool as the the rotating ones. I think I might spend a day just messing around, figuring it out. I got to figure out how to measure all the fields and get the links of the fields right and all that other stuff. So, all right, let's think about what we're doing here for a second. Uh, field number four. Bring that down. At any rate, northeast headed south. Generate course. Alright, this should be one meter to the left. Activate four wheel drive. And we'll get over here. Drive course. And I will jump out, grab the other one, and get it rolling as well. And we'll get some going. But yeah, I think uh, I think I want to mess around with that. Just to add something else into it, you know. Um, not necessarily anything else. And where I was thinking it would also be pretty cool to use it is is on a grass field. You know, so that you have the... That's not what I want to do there, kids. I completely hose that. There we go. Do I have all this right? Please tell me I got everything right. Nine meters, blah, blah, blah. Offset, drive course. Should be good to go now. Okay. You know, like on a field where you don't have to plan it all the time, so the walkers aren't in the way. Uh, you know, you've already got a grassy area, and uh, just set it in there to mo to do the grass. Keep your grass watered. That would be good. It's not that hard to spray these fields, but now field one, field one would make a ton of sense to get one of those. Um, and walk it up through there as long as it stayed in a straight line that's my only fear with that one is keeping it in a straight line all right so those two guys are doing their thing what else do we need to do today I think that's about it it's pretty much just plow 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 for the most part uh, let's see I did go ahead and top off this guy, which that is something we can do real quick. I need to put some feed into the um, into the cattle pen, so we can do that real quick. Do you need to top off the feed in the cattle pen? We're good on straw, because when I was collecting the straw, I dumped the straw in there already. So that is taken care of. There we go. So we'll get the fields ready and dressed so we can uh, come in and sow them and then we'll do our our planting we're gonna do oats this go around as well as probably do some more corn um, you know if nothing else we'll get enough corn going in the BGA to uh, start doing that oh I thought about doing potatoes too um, since we need to start getting those ready for the for the pigs and the um, and the beef which I know we've gone over this before you don't really need the um, potatoes and beets to make them productive but you know it's there. Let's put it in there and play the game. But um, 
we've gone through the whole conversation before about how you wouldn't feed your cows potatoes and you wouldn't feed your, feed your pigs potatoes either. Um, not if you were doing a commercial application, you wouldn't. You'd be giving them pelletized food for the pigs and, well, beef, you would be giving them the same thing you're giving your dairy cows. You'd be feeding them lots of grass. I've never been to the supermarket and seen a package marked potato fed beef. You? Pretty much it'll say certified Angus grass fed beef. Uh, it's not going to say potato fed. look at our animals I uh, gave a sheep a whole lot more grass so they're good to go water level they're pretty good on uh, let's look at everything else here they've got cows they now have 64 percent feed rations that's okay uh, we can put a whole nother trailer in there so we'll grab another trailer load and then we'll probably put a little water in there just to top that off as well and uh, get that taken care of and like I said I've got the feed sick station all the way filled back up again so uh, we'll dump this this will zero it out and take all hundred thousand liters out of it we'll put that into the uh, into the dairy pen and we'll start make it more and then when we fast track time all our silage will be ready so I can put more and more and more into it Open sesame. There we go. Uh, dump? I guess I'm not far enough over to the left. There we go. And we can take this off the screen now. There we go. Just about done. But yeah, I think I might off screen mess around with that irrigation system a little bit and uh, see if it will work on this particular farm. Um, too many, a lot of narrow fields. You'd have to have the walkers that are motorized uh, and use those more than you would be using stationary pivot points. Uh, unless you cut your fields up a little bit and made them a little more square. But I'll take a look at that, see what I come up with. Uh, maybe that's something we can do, uh, but it may not be. It would be bad having it, because of course you guys know I've talked about that thing before, wishing that it, something like that was in the game. So now that it's in there, it'd be nice to actually utilize it, but... Um, it might or might not work on this particular map. All 
righty. That's done there. Uh, let's check on the process of our John Deere because it seems like it might be pretty close to getting done over that field. And then we can move him into field number seven. Let's see. These guys are doing their thing and he is on his last leg here. Very cool. So this thing, like I said, this would be cool. What I'm thinking about doing is, is doing a planting where we plow and, and like, like I said, like I do in real life, a planting where we plow with the traditional plows and then the next planting will alternate and come back and use this thing to rip the soil up, disc and plant. And um, the first planting will be rip, turn the soil, and um, and then come back. Maybe what we do is anytime we have to put lime down, we put lime on the field and plow with a traditional plow. And anytime we don't have to use lime, we come in and use the ripper and just rip the ground. So that might be that might be a solution for me. So. Stop the driver, and then we'll roll on over to uh, field number seven. However, these tops, man, it drives me nuts that it doesn't get that right. There is a solution for that. Actually, you know what? I'm going to have to do a headland on this. Oh, so let's go ahead and say field path. We're doing field seven modified. I'm going to start in the northwest corner this time. And we are going to be headed to the east. And I am going to have to do at least one headland on it. Yeah, one had little work because of the tractor shed there. Generate course. Of course. The thing about the ripper versus the plows, it can it can rip the soil a lot faster than then we could plow uh, in game because it can do it 11 miles an hour whereas we're limited to like four or five six miles an hour plowing if we change over to the plow guys well actually they're going at 10 they're not doing too bad anyways it's just one more tool we can use on the farm here might be something you guys like and want to use on yours yeah, I know I'm not not everybody plows their fields like I do um, I trust me I get plenty of comments from people all the time you know you don't need to plow all you have to do is cultivate why do you plow such a waste of time because I like it mm, I'm watering the ground because I didn't quite get over far enough to the left There 
really like that feeding system they had on that uh on holes housing that's pretty cool uh it would be neat to have that added into some more maps um though again it's a bell and a whistle um it really isn't that necessary but I knew on bigger operations you would have something like that, you know, so It's not surprising something like that would make its way into this game Because those do exist in real life one second is full up oh, I can take that in now I'm gonna give the sheep a little bit of water oh that's right I'm gonna go in the other gate to do that and then I'm gonna go kill a dog no I'm just kidding there is a squirrel that's loves to taunt my dog it gets right outside the window and actually runs around on the windowsill and it drives my dog nuts and that is probably what is going on right now just i heard her barking out there and i could not figure out what for the life of me is going on I have one dog that barks constantly and one dog that won't make a noise to save his life. Which is sort of nice. I mean, I love the fact that he's quiet um, for the most part. However, it is frustrating when he needs to go out, he won't make a noise. He'll just stand at the door and sit there and you won't even know that he's at the back door and needs to go to the out to use a restroom um, or go do his business whatever you want to call it the other dog she'll walk right up to the door and make so much noise you can't help but take her out so yeah if I could tone her down and bring him up a little bit I'd have a really happy life with those two but uh, it's either one extreme or the other with them so all right, I, I don't know. I'm filling this up. I really don't think I need it anymore. Let's see. Water, water, water level. Mm, I guess I could put a little bit more into uh, into the cattle pen. So we'll take one more load over to the cattle pen. Put it in there, and then we'll be good with that. All righty. what else is going on all right uh let's see looking at comments uh i've gotten a lot of comments lately from well in the last 24 hours from people saying uh can you link this mod can you link this mod can you link this mod um most of the mods are linked uh in the mod spreadsheet especially the mods that people are asking for links for um now Look, on the on the whole hose and stuff, all the links are there for you inside the folder when you unzip it. If you downloaded the map and there's something that's not work, working, when you unzipped it, there, there were two files in there. There was, well, excuse me, when you unzipped it, there was the file with the map, and then there was another folder called additional stuff or other stuff or other files or whatever it's called and if you open it up there's a PDF in there uh, and while it's in German it still has links to every single thing that pertains to that particular map so uh, if you're having a problem finding a particular something or other for Holzhausen it's all right there for you in a PDF so um, 
I shouldn't need to link things for that one for you. You should be able to find those on your own. And, uh, and I don't mean that in a bad way, but I, there's a lot of people who won't even try to find things for themselves. They just, their immediate go-to is to come to you and say, yeah, can you give me a link to that? Can you give me a link to that? I guess that's the difference in me and other people. I've never asked anybody for a link to something. If I see it in their video or something, I start looking for it and I pretty much can figure it out and find it. I mean, like, if, if you didn't know what this tractor was, you could stop the video where, you know, and look, you know, look at the number on it. You could stop the video and go, oh, okay, well, it's, uh, some, such and such, you know. Oh, okay. Well, I can find that. I can do a search for it. That's how I normally find stuff. I watch somebody's video, and if I see something they've got, I either watch the video when they purchased it, and, like, when they're in the store, and they're looking through their stuff in their store, uh, like, under mods, you know. I'll freeze the video, and I'll look at what they have, write down the numbers, and then do a Google search for it, and find it. So, sometimes it kills me when I get questions on the basics of stuff now some of the mods I, I get it some of the mods are a little bit hard to find and I get that and I usually try to tell y'all where they are and I usually try to do the spreadsheet but some of them are a little some of these are a little ridiculous in the time it takes to type out a, a comment to me that says hey where do I find the link to this most of them you could save yourself a lot more time and just go into uh, mod hosters and type in that name of that mod and you'd find it immediately so and you get it a lot faster than if you wait on me to respond to your comment because it could be 24 hours before I respond to it uh, let's see what we're doing over here. We're getting closer. And I hate the way it does that. It drives me nuts. Alright, so these guys are working on this field. And this guy is knocking this one out. So, y'all, I'm not really worried about those little spots that are getting left. They'll get taken care of when we come back in and cultivate the field. Though it drives me nuts. I don't understand why the developers of this game, and this is not course play, this is the developers of this game. Why you didn't take the time to think about when the tractor gets to the end of the field, if it's coming up the field and it's going to make a right hand turn why didn't they program it to say uh, have the tractor steer you know 45 degrees off off axis to the left and travel a little bit out and then make its turn to the right so it could swing out come around and come back into the field which is how you would you know if you were going to do it to try and, and make a tighter turn like that, that's the way you do it. You go off to the left a little bit right here. You'd swing out, then make your, you know, in order to widen your turn out a little bit. And instead, they just have it automatically cut wheels to the right and make the turn. I wish they would, somebody over there, before they make Farming Sim 2017 or whatever they come out with next, Somebody needs to kick them in the head and tell them that they need to do that because, I mean, it just seems so obvious. Oh, when I'm using a bigger implement, maybe I want to cut off to the, uh, the opposing direction of the turn slightly and then come back in? That makes a lot of sense. Which, again, I think the developers of this game never actually went to a working farm and uh, to see how things actually work. Um, they either watched a lot of videos and got all their specs from 
actual equipment but never spent any time actually seeing how a farm works but that's all right all right so that is doing its thing one more thing I want to go look at real quick okay so I'll run over here real quick I need to check the wool situation see where we're at with it because it has been growing quite a bit if we've got more than five six pallets done it might be time to head over and sell it off we have just three and a fourth one almost done okay I guess we could just go ahead and fill this whole area up and then haul it off but I think the trailer I'm gonna use to haul that off is gonna be that um, that Flegel galvanized trailer that I was gonna buy to to move the uh, compactor but I didn't I mean I could use the Gale trailer I guess use it it's got a locking script on it it'll work okay we can do that we'll just fill that whole thing up and then once everything is completely done we'll put it all on here and uh and haul it off so we can make use of that trailer that'll work we can do that all right so anyways all right so plowing is underway and um we'll get that done otherwise i'm pretty much done for the day on this video otherwise I'm just rambling on about things that and killing time using automation changes things I'll uh, have to find me something to actually work on in the next one I gotta get filled 20 plowed so we'll finish up these fields and I'll get filled 20 plowed and uh, tomorrow's video will be cultivating and uh, hopefully seeding some so we'll start getting the process done as far as fertilization goes on these fields, did look at them. It looks like everything's good as far as pH. Moisture will attack once everything is uh, planted and done. But um, we are looking to have them put NPK pretty much on all the fields to begin with. And then uh, we'll go from there. Because each field's going to lose at least four points in nitrogen. And looking at everybody, they're all right around five and six. Um, nitrogen so a spraying of MPK will do that and then we may have to come back and do a spraying of PK uh, just to get the PK levels up on all the fields so uh, that's sort of where we're at with everything and then field 20 is going to be its own beast because the numbers on it are probably going to be way out of whack so um, but otherwise we should be in pretty good shape so uh, in our next video it will uh, we're coming up on uh, 1800 hours so um, you don't like these guys working after 8 o'clock, so probably I'll finish up the plowing and we'll start a brand new day, ready to cultivate and get the seed in the ground in the morning. So that'll be that. All right, so I hope you guys will come back tomorrow and join me for another edition of Farm and Simulator. And um, if you like the video, make sure you give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, totally understand, you can hit that dislike button just like that one guy does every single day he's my hero again because he watches the videos every single day for some reason even though he hates them all right thanks for watching guys and um, if you haven't subscribed already please do uh, we're approaching 6,000 subscribers which is amazing you guys are great and uh, we'll continue to mix things up I hope you guys enjoyed the hunter video that I did yesterday I know it may not be your cup of tea um, but I am trying to just uh, mix some things up and have some variety on the channel um, and with the new reserve coming out you're probably gonna see a lot of hunter stuff uh, with me doing stuff on white realm um, I haven't yet gotten good enough with dirt rally to start doing the videos on that um, there is a G27 being ordered uh, probably on the 1st of October is when I'm going to make that order. So um, as soon as I do that, that'll help me out with that game. Um, what else? That's about it. 
so y'all take it easy and i will see you tomorrow bye bye